Second example um, is, is this, which, which illustrates, if you like, the way that the, the way that uh, critical systems thinking, creative holism, allows you to critique particular interventions using systems ideas. Uh, and this was in the social housing sector, where, not in the current round of cuts, but in the previous round, the Gershon report was trying to save a million pounds in the social housing sector. And various housing associations, particularly the Northern Housing Consortium, uh, had become interested in lean systems as promulgated by the Vanguard consultancy and John Seddon uh, as a way of making uh, the delivery of housing services, for example, more efficient and more uh, effective. And they convinced the powers that be, in this case it was the office of the Deputy Prime Minister, to carry out some pilot projects uh, using lean systems in the social housing uh, sector. And I was appointed as the academic evaluator of these projects. And this is the approach, by the way, lean systems, as I said, which has got most traction, it seems, in the public sector at the moment. If you, if you ask people about systems thinking in the public sector, they'll more often than not be thinking about this lean system stuff. And it's based upon a, a relatively simple set of systems ideas. So it, it does take a whole system customer perspective. It wants to deliver to the customer what the customer wants. It's not very, might not seem revolutionary, but anybody who's ever worked in, in a whole, has studied some of the systems in local authorities will know that it very well is revolutionary. Um, it tries to make the parts interdependent so that it can realize the customer's needs, what the customer wants. It uses concepts of variety. So what, de what is the demand out there? To what extent can that, maybe can that be made predictable? And if you can understand that demand, you can design against that demand. But it's still likely to be significant, that variety and that demand. So you need to free up those aspects of your system that are trying to cope with that variety, which means using people as people. And it means minimum command and control so people can react flexibly. It means encouraging individual and organisational learning through involving the people in the analysis of what's going wrong with the system and in the redesign process itself. And it means evaluating uh, according to whole system and performance. So you, you evaluate according to whether the customer thinks they've had their need met. You don't evaluate according to the, whether the call centre person has, has, has managed to answer three calls within five minutes. It's a, it's a real reaction against this was uh, effect. This, this has had its impact, I think, because it's a, a reaction against the sort of target culture that, um, that came to dominate under the, the sort of Labour government centralisation and command and control. And the feeling that despite all the resource going in, despite all the resource going in to the health service, to the public sector, to education, the results coming out to benefit the customers. Uh, was just nothing like comparable uh, to, the, to the resource. Huge resource, very little benefit. Productivity going down. I, I could cry if I think about that missed opportunity of the, the last Labour government with all that resource available. But I won't. Um, this was uh, the results of the very simple set of systems ideas, but some fairly remarkable results. Not, this is not a, a whole success story. So don't, I know you're academics, so you're going to be thinking, well, it can't be as good as that. And it, and it wasn't. So I'll tell you why in a minute, if you'll just wait. So in Tees Valley, uh, this was housing repairs. The end-to-end -end repair time uh, reduced from 46 to 5.9 days on average and was sustained. I mean, that, that um, particular system to deliver repairs to the householder in, in Tees Valley um, that, that particular system, from the point when the repair was notified to the point when the invoice was delivered, it, there were over 250 steps in the, in the process. Uh, and, and I thought that that was pretty bad until I looked at adult social care in Hull City Council. Where if you went into the adult social care system in Hull City Council at the wrong place, you could go through a thousand steps until you got the care that you needed. Most people were dead. And that's, that's a serious point. It's that bad. And certainly everybody gets worse before the care comes, and therefore the care is more, uh, the 
traffic areas more expensive and more difficult to, to deliver in at the end point. But in, in Tees Valley, I mean, Seddon's no longer, Vanguard no longer happy with this, but what they boast about now is Portsmouth housing, where uh, you can actually make a call and say, my window's stuck or my shower's not working, I want you to come round and mend it at two o'clock tomorrow, and somebody will actually come round and mend it. Can you believe that? It's not difficult enough in the private sector, isn't it? But in, in the public sector, they'll actually come round and, and do what you want on the next day at the time when you're in, and, and you can, uh, and, and um, when you want them to be there, it's just, it's just amazing. And that example in Portsmouth is up on Gary Hamill's great business guru's website as a, a revolutionary way of, um, uh, of, of getting rid of command and control and managing these sort of processes much better. It's an example for him of freeing up people to a different form of, of management. Hamill, like the complexity theorists, talk about this, but he doesn't know how to do it, but systems thinkers do. At Leeds, the, the average void, which is trying to let properties that have become empty, that was reduced from 50 to 25 days. There was a follow-up study by the Northern Housing Consortium a year later, and they found it risen again to 34, for the reason I'll mention. But the number of empty properties reduced from 240 to 144 to 118. Preston, this was the more complex case study. The time taken for this was collecting debts, particularly from new tenants, the time taken for first payment to hit the account reduced from 34 to 20 days. 18% of new tenants fell into debt compared to 43% previously, so that's all good. But the relet time rose from 32 to 40 days, for a reason I'll mention. So let's apply critical systems thinking to that and try and just look at those, just those two problems that arose in Leeds and, and Preston. First thing to say is that a very simple set of systems ideas, real progress, six-figure gains um, in, uh, in Tees Valley and in, uh, and in Leeds, all documented in the, in the report and in the, the follow-up report by Northern Housing Consortium. So get this right and it can bring really significant benefits to the, to the, to the public sector at least. Um, so what went wrong? Well, the, the Vanguard approach is, is about um, optimising processes. It, it's systemic in the sense that it it wants you to serve a customer purpose, uh, but it's concentrating on one particular purpose uh, and, if you like, not considering the other purposes which it, that purpose might, that process, sorry, I shouldn't say process is easier, that process will interact with. So in Preston, it started as a system just to get pe uh, tenants to pay on time, but before the lean system study had finished, four to five directorates in Preston had got involved in one way or another. And one of the processes, uh, which was to let houses quicker, uh, exactly the same process that we're trying to make more efficient and effective in Leeds, got worse in Preston because of the sub-optimisation of one process on the whole system, impacting another process. Because while you're setting up tenants to succeed in order to, that they can pay on time, your means getting all the housing benefit together, getting all the forms together, telling them where to pay, when to pay. So it takes so bloody long that your property is stuck there empty. So you're trying to optimise one process, but another process is getting, is getting worse. So Vanguard is happy to, to do system thinking at the process level, but not at the systems level of a set of processes. And it's always struck me that where it's possible, something like the viable system model that talks about the the management of process, coordination of processes would be better. At Leeds, uh, the reason why um, the, the reletting process got longer again was because where the, the team doing the study, uh, their approach was to centralise and to take all the decisions about who should get a house when, that offended another uh, potential customer purpose in the system, which was the local offices. Now, their concern was with what they might term sustainable community. So they were interested in uh, showing the tenant the house, in uh, uh, acquainting the tenant with the community, making sure it was the type of place they wanted to live, with some degree and hope, therefore, that this thing could be, this tenancy could be sustained. Uh, and that sort of war about what the customer purpose was, was it the purpose of the house to be re-let, or was it the purpose of the... Uh, to, to, to get 
to, to get um, sustainable communities, meant that we had to, they had to be involved, the, the local offices, and that's what added the extra time into the process itself. So in analysing lean systems within that system of systems methodologies, you, you can see it, if you like, it's different from hard systems in that it's very keen to uh, involve people in analysing what's wrong with the system. The people who work in the system analyse what's wrong with it and they're involved in the redesign. So it makes progress along that dimension a bit. It makes progress along this dimension, the, the vertical one, uh, because it, it deals with matters of variety and measuring variety and, and ensuring that you can respond to the complexity of the environment of the system. Uh, but it doesn't go along either of those two dimensions as far as soft systems thinking does or the viable system model, for example, does. Because along the horizontal dimension, it has no way of managing the... the uh, if there's a problem between different conceptions of what the purpose is, what the customer purpose is, and along the vertical dimension, it can't manage the relationship between a set of processes. It only can man manage the elements within one particular, within one particular process. It requires using in combination with other systems. It requires use, either in particular circumstances where its strengths are, are its strengths are best are best used in the circumstance you're dealing with, or it requires use in combination with other systems approaches. 